Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It's my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York. We bring you Torah and music, blessing and community every weekday. We've been doing so since March 18th, 2020. Today it is June 4th, 2024. It's broadcast 1066. It is day 242 since October 7th. Today is a very big day because every day is a very big day until our family is whole again. So I welcome all of you to bring your whole souls, to bring your sweetness, to bring your resilience, to bring all of the real feelings that we have. Louise, good to see you. Penny, Arlene, welcome, welcome, my friends. Yes, thank you, Penny. It's a big day. Arlene, it's good to see you. Linda, Sandy, Arlene, Boker Tov, my friends. It's really good to see all of you. I am overwhelmed at what today represents, a day to honor all of us. Uh, we have been building this community for over four years and three months, and some of us will tonight be celebrating what that community means. I'm touched to be part of that honoring and shush, glad to share a special day with you. Happy birthday. Um, I'm sorry that I won't be able to keep up with everybody, but it's really good to see you all. Louise Bokertov, Marilyn, Michelle, Joyce Bokertov, Cecile and Peter, Amy. Good morning, Lydia. Good to see you. Hi, Carl. Catherine, good to see you. Sending love to Australia. Adrian, my friend, sending you a big hug. It's good to see everybody here. Let's see who else is here. Lisa and Natalie, Deborah and Minna, good to see you. Friends, I'm going to be um, asking a colleague in a moment to post on our um, post on the feed the link if you want to register for the online streaming of tonight's celebration. Um, Joy, sending you loved in Minneapolis. Noah, my friend, sending love to Sharon, Massachusetts. Got to hug your son yesterday. Deborah, it's good to see you. Thank you for all you represent to me, too. All right. We can get lost in this joy, which is not a bad thing. So let's soak it in. Barry and Ron, good to see you, too. Um, Janice, good to see you. Hi, Debbie. All right. Um, for those on Instagram, uh, feel free to check out uh, either my personal Facebook page or UJA's comments on this video. You'll see the link to register for the online streaming tonight, which will be 7.15 p.m. Uh, New York time. For now, let's take a breath, get ready for some Torah. And Stacy, a mitzvah is a mitzvah. Thank you for taking care of your friend. That's holy. All right. Take a breath, sing a blessing, learn some Torah. Oh, you know, before I do that, my dear friend Lisa Rappaport, Rabbi Lisa Rappaport, what an honor to keep on sharing Torah with you. Okay, here we go. so good to be with all of you. Let's let's get straight to Torah, but when I say Torah, I mean, as Rabbi Eli Spitz calls it, the unfolding narrative of the Jewish people. We are, um, we're in it. We're in it. And this Parsha, Bamidbar, which begins the book of Bamidbar, the book of Numbers, 
um, sets the stage for the rest of our journey as a people. In fact, it channels everywhere that we've been and makes sure that we talk about it. We tell the story of having been in the desert. It was two generations, but countless lifetimes and an infinite number of lessons to be learned. It begins, friends, with a really, really important thing, which is counting people. Now, there is a hesitation in Jewish tradition from counting people. I'm going to be talking about that tonight in, uh, in my remarks at Israel Matters. Uh, but what I wanted to point to this morning, maybe in preparation for tonight, but also just in recognition of all of the beauty that we have generated, is that the census that is taken um, is uh, is a complicated one because it is for the purpose of defending ourselves. We need to know how many of us there are so that we know how big our defending um, forces will be. And that posture tells us what it is sometimes to walk through this world, especially when the world resembles a wilderness, when the world resemb resembles what T.S. Eliot called a wasteland. Because when we're in such indeterminate times, it's really important to know who's there. So some of you asked, I saw a comment, you know, how do we make a gift in honor of tonight? Can I, can I just make a suggestion? Decide that you're going to do something good for somebody else. Make sure that the path ahead for somebody else, if not paved, is supported. You want to make a gift? Go to UJ Fed Federation of New York and make a gift there. We will deliver it to someone in need. That's what we do. But also decide that with your body you're going to show up as much as you can to help this world because it resembles too often a wilderness. It really does set the tone when I read this Parsha for the work of being human. And so looking at these verses, this is chapter one of the book of Numbers, verse 17. Moses and Aaron took these people who were indicated by name, but nikvu, the word, is such an interesting word. What was it for Moses and Aaron to indicate them by name? And this is specifically those who are going to fight. Nikvu means pierced, from the word nekev, which means a hole. That's how you know a pipe is hollow. There, there are actually so many, um, so many things that happen to our souls and bodies when we know that we're counted. We are pierced. Every morning, the first thing I do is I put on this necklace. Every morning. And what's the blessing for putting on this necklace? Bring them home now. Amen. Yesterday, I spent time with survivors from Kibbutz Be'iri in the south and then helped moderate a panel for family members of Muslim and Jewish hostages being held by Hamas since October 7th. And all of them, because the news of yesterday morning was that five people who we thought were hostages, it turns out, have already been killed. And it was devastating again, literally piercing. I want you to hear this phrase. Hear this phrase. Vaykach Moshe Aaron, Moses and Aaron took all these people, these warriors, asher nikvu v'shemot, who were pierced by their names. Are you saying the names of our beloveds? Are you? Are you saying Agam? Are you saying Hirsch? Are you saying Omer? Are you saying Muhammad? Are you saying Keith? Citizens of 23 countries and of at least four faiths? Say the prayer with me now. You want to honor tonight? Align with this work. Be part of the blessing. Be part of the demand. Bring them home now. Amen. Say it again with me. Close your eyes and mean it, please. Bring them home now. Amen. You know how you know if you're a warrior on behalf of good stuff in the world? By which I don't mean one tribe succeeding at the expense of another. You know, you know you're a warrior? Because Nikvu Vishemot. Because we are pierced by their names. 
We walk in a world that we think is defined and ordered. And then we find out that it's just so fragile. We find out again, just so fragile. Tonight, representatives of Kibbutz Beiri will, will be with us to share their story and to call our attention. And former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett will be with us tonight. My beloved Neshama will be singing. Four of our children will be singing with us. But what's most important is not, it's not that stuff. What's most important is that our community continues to unify and strengthen our people and call for the return of the hostages. Bring them home now, Amen. So I have so much more to say, but that's all that's worth saying. Bring them home now. Amen. Thanks for being part of that prayer, my friends. I want to share with you something very profound that was shared with me yesterday by one of the family members of a hostage. He's uh, an Israeli man, a veteran of many wars. And he said, just imagine the tone and the tenor and just the look. He looked like an Israeli. <laughs> something in his face really did that for me. And he said, I grew up thinking I didn't need you. I was sure diaspora Judaism, it's not a thing that will last. I don't need you. He said, but when I was at the parade, by the way, friends, 100,000 marchers, 100,000 record shattering number of people came to support Israel, to support the hostages who led the march. He said, I looked at that parade and I just started crying. I don't feel alone anymore because I have you. Friends, that's our work to make sure no, no member of our people, no member of our family feels alone. If only we could know that we could send that emotionality, that support, that love, that fierce embrace tunneling through the ground to where our beloveds are being held. Maybe we can. Maybe right now, what we really need to do for a moment to make sure that their names pierce us is to let them in. Let them in. Send your heart with me. I don't want to sing Hatikva just yet. I'm going to sing it in a moment with you. Send your heart and say the prayer one more time with me. Bring them home now. Amen. Bring them home now. Amen. For those who will be with us uh, in person tonight, I cannot wait to celebrate with you in person, but I want to say something specific to those who will join us online. This is a community that is real, and you are it. Thank you, my friends, for making sure I never feel alone and for taking care of each other and caring about each other offline. Bless you all. Bless our people. Bless our world. With me, friends, on this 1066th broadcast, on day 242 since October 7th, with our beloveds in our hearts. Let's send our hearts east. Kol hod baleva penima nefesh yehudi homia ulefate mizrach kadima ayim letzion Sophia, on lo amda tikvateinu, ha tikva bat shnot alpayim, liot am chovshim, beyat zeinu, eretz zion yerushalayim. Liot am chovshim, 
Eyatzenu Eretz Zion Yerushalayim Bring them home now. Am Yisrael Chai. Take care, friends. See you tonight.